Okay, so hello, welcome to the Oral Health Podcast. We're here talking about fizzy drinks because this free February is coming to an end. I'm sure we've all been abstaining from fizzy drinks in that time, but um, just to talk about why they are so damaging to your teeth, why we support Fizz Free Feb, um, and how, you know, you can get that fizzy kick throughout the rest of the year without reaching for a coke or a lemonade or whatever your favorite fizzy drink is um so yeah karen how are you doing i'm good thank you sophie are you well yeah good 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 well yeah i mean the 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 problem with fizzy drinks is they're easy to get hold of and um you know you can sort of just walk in and grab a can as part of a meal deal if you're going to get your lunch um i mean obviously we have got the sugar tax which um was was put in there to put put people off buying the full fat versions and and going for the diet drinks because obviously the very high sugars in um a lot of canned drinks i mean you're looking sort of seven eight teaspoons of sugar in a can i mean we're not talking a liter bottle or anything we're talking a 330 milliliter um can which is incredibly high um i mean that's that's a good portion of your daily recommended uh, sugar so we've got the sugar and we've got the acid in there as well and the tendency is when you have a a fizzy drink like that that you don't drink it down all in one go because it's fizzy it it is difficult to drink down in one go so you tend to sip it so you know what we've talked talked before um at length about you know the hour that it takes your saliva to neutralize the the plaque acids that are produced so if you're sipping on um a can of uh full sugar uh, fizzy drink the hour will start every time you have a sip of that drink so if you are sipping a can all uh, morning your saliva just doesn't get a chance to to neutralize that acid so in effect your teeth can be uh, at risk of this attack all day long mm-hmm. and it's important you know if you do want a fizzy drink choose a diet v- variety um, and have it as part of meal time I mean we're always very um, conscious of, of trying to advise people to do um a safe swap you know when when we go to the the supermarket the sandwich shop or whatever and do a meal deal look for your favorite drink but in a light version Mm -hmm. or a no added sugar version because they are available or even better you know pick up a bottle of water it's good to have that but you know we all like a fizzy drink we like a you know a, a fizzy drink as a mixer yeah. Uh, if we're having something else you know and that, and again you can look for the um the, the the low sugar version which is always going to be going to be better yeah but i mean you've still got the acid problem don't you you do have the acid problem um you've got the acetic acid that is in there uh, in anything that is carbonated is going to have that in it's not going to have it um it, it's not sort of the double whammy of the the sugar and the acid so again we've got to look at not not sipping it um all day uh but it is better mm-hmm. you know we, we if we're talking about damage limitation um th- then choosing that is better i, I mean in an ideal world milk or water is the only thing that we would drink which it's boring we don't live in an ideal world yeah. that's how it is so um you know if we look at as long as we understand that these things are um to to, to have in moderation as with everything yeah it's true. an an understanding what happens when we when these things go into our mouths and you know using a straw is great because you can bypass your teeth you're getting Mm -hmm. it right into the the back of your throat to swallow so you know the the trend now is you know with reusable metal straws they're great I keep one in my handbag and if I go out I can have a little gin and tonic with with a straw and it doesn't look out of place maybe struggle if it's a you know pint of cider or something like that it may look a little bit weird but you know start a new trend but as long as we understand that we've got an hour 
that it's going to take for your saliva to uh, neutralize it. I mean, we know of ways of speeding that up. So you chew some sugar-free chewing gum for 20 minutes after you've had had a drink will help speed it up. A fluoride mouthwash. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, have a sip of your drink and go and rinse your mouth with fluoride mouthwash, which I have heard people doing. And that, yeah, and and you've got to be sensible about it. I mean, I wouldn't expect people to have a sip of the drink, go and rinse their mouth, come back, have a sip of their drink, go and rinse their mouth. You never get anything done, for one thing. (laughs) But, um, you know, it's, it's over the top. But if you have your drink and then... You're not going to have any more fizzy drink or another G&T. You can rinse your mouth with, with a fluoride mouthwash. Mm-hmm. Um, you could even have a, a drink of water in between. So, you know, you're, you're limiting the time that it's touching your teeth. But as I say, a straw would do that beautifully. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously being environmentally friendly with your, your reusable straw would be good too. Yeah. Um, so I... I personally don't really enjoy like fizzy pop no. very much, um, and I don't like plain carbonated water. Flavored fizzy water, like you get in like the yeah. supermarket bottles for like sixty p. I love those. Yes. I love drinking those, but they are fizzy. They've not got the sugar in. But what about like carbonated water? Carbonated water is still acidic. Mm-hmm. It's got acetic acid in. Um, I mean, when you look at those fizzy waters with the flavouring in, it's 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 no added sugar, but th- there will be some sugar in it. But, you know, when you're looking at a bottle of that, if you've got a litre bottle, you're probably looking about four calories. So from a calorific point of view, it's extremely low and people don't drink tend to drink those in like a full litre mm-hmm. but again you have got the same issue that you've got some acid in there so again part of a meal time with a straw um you know that that will help to limit the damage i mean we're not we're not talking about negating the damage completely but we're talking about reducing the risk. And mm-hmm. that's that's like with a lot of things about oral health. We're not talking about stopping it completely. We're saying understand the risks and try and make the them less risky. Yeah. So. Yeah. And um, you can, like the, the non-flavoured carbonated water, I'm not personally a fan of. I know people do and like it and enjoy it but yeah it is got a little bit of a lower ph than standard it has but not by loads right it's like a few points yeah it's it's not massive so you know i wouldn't say don't drink anything so if you want to have your flavored water and that's the only sort of hydration you're getting then that's better than not drinking Mm -hmm. at all i mean a dehydrated mouth is it has its own set of problems yeah. you know so if you are not going to be drinking but you will only have the the flavored fizzy water that is better than letting your mouth dry out so again we're looking against sort of risk uh risk assessments of, of everything that we do mm-hmm. I'm going to, we've got some information from the uh, National Source Water Association. I think they were the British Hydration Society yes, for that. Um, now they say with sparkling water, with regard to dental health, plain water, tap still or sparkling is an excellent drink of choice. Sparkling waters have a lower pH, which we've said. Um, drinks with low pH values have higher erosive potential than those with no- neutral or alkaline pHs. However, you'd have to drink sparkling water on a regular basis for a long period of time for that to be a concern, right? So it's... Yeah, and then I think that it's the regularity that we're looking at. So the more often you have it, the more likelihood is that it will affect the enamel on your teeth. Mm-hmm. So we're not... <laughs> We're not talking about um, sort of dragging it out throughout the day. Have a drink, hydrate yourself, and then leave a bigger gap between it. And then it gives your saliva a chance to neutralise that acid. Mm -hmm. So it's better than some. As you say, you don't like the taste of it. I like the taste of it. 
it's um i mean it's just soda water isn't it it's just water and i mean yeah. i like water though so yeah i prefer still water to sparkling yeah i often would have still instead of sparkling but if somebody gives me sparkling i'm not gonna make a fuss about it um i know that there is some speculation about artificial sweetness but obviously a carbonated water is not going to have a a sweetener in it but um, again there's been no um, robust studies that that have shown any link at all to health issues and um, artificial sweetness. So really in summary if you're going to have a fizzy drink preferred that it's something naturally carbonated or at the very least has no added sugar to it as a sweetener version it's like a coke zero instead of a full fat coke and yeah um, that's got wallet implications as well because you're not paying a sugar tax on it but that's you know neither here nor there out of all of the options that you can have still water milk best option but yeah. if you want a fizzy drink go for something a bit more natural than a yeah. But, I mean, I would say the next one, the next best would be carbonated water. The next best to that would be carbonated flavored water. Mm-hmm. Then would be the sugary free version of your favorite fizzy drink. So I think in that kind of order, we're looking at really yeah. to be on the safe side. You know, if it's it's something that I think we could all take from and learn or just to protect our teeth a little bit more it's not absolutely they don't, I, I mean i'm sure some people swear they can taste a difference but i personally can't i think you can get used to it can't yeah. you because i mean my my children often say that they can tell the difference if you know it's a, a store's own brand or it's um you know a, a label um drink but i think if you have it for couple of days you don't even notice it and Mm. you know the thing with um a lot of carbonated drinks you're talking about caffeine in them as well which you know people talk about coffee having caffeine in it and oh no we shouldn't have too much caffeine but that's not really mentioned too much in the sort of fizzy drinks part of it because i know that if my husband hasn't had coke for a couple of days and he you know he really does suffer with with uh, caffeine withdrawal symptoms and um i know it's from the the fizzy Mm -hmm. drinks that he scaffolds away somewhere (laughs) there i can't find them them i think he probably does yes (laughs) (laughs) but anyway um fizz free try to keep as fizz free as you can but yeah carbonate water better option than fizzy drinks yeah it's about damage limitation definitely well thank you karen um been lovely to talk as always and we will see you next week thank you very much